Hi everyone, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn and today I have a card that would be perfect to give to a teacher for Valentine's Day. I love the chalkboard from the A Good Apple stamp set and then I thought the little apple with the face from My Silly Valentine would be cute with this. So what I did first was stamp the chalkboard from A Good Apple on some smooth white cardstock and then I'm stamping the apple from my Silly Valentine there. I'm going to stamp that again on some masking paper and just cut out the right side. You could cut all of it out if you needed to, but I'm only really going to need to mask off the apple on the right side. And then I'm stamping the smaller apple from a good apple stamp set next to it. So I have a, a little group of apples there and then I stamped the eraser as well along the right side of the chalkboard. Now to color in my chalkboard I am using the chisel tip of my Copic marker and I'm just going back and forth and it's okay that I don't get right next to the edge of my chalkboard. I can fill that in in a little bit when I do some shading and things. But this kind of helps give the illusion of erasing the chalkboard by creating those lines which was what I was going for when I colored it in. I wanted to be able to give that illusion without having to do a ton of extra work. Now I did go back in with a bit darker gray marker to add some shading just kind of along the bottom and around the stamped images maybe around some of the edges as well just depending on on where I needed some additional shape shading and then I'm going to go back in with that same color that I use the chisel tip for and blend that out just a little bit. I can also go back along the edges and smooth out anywhere I need to and then anywhere around the apples the more intricate designs I can fill in there as well. So you can see I didn't really do a whole lot of smoothing or making it super pretty kind of pull out a little bit of that dark there from the edge to blend it out a little bit. Now I can go back over it if I need to. And I went back with my chisel tip because I really wanted to keep that look of erasing the chalkboard. Now one thing I thought would be fun is to take a lighter color which is going to have a lot more of the blending solution in it and create some little dots. This is going to make the ink wick away from wherever you're laying down that lighter color. You could even use the colorless blender if you wanted to and it'll create those fun little dot textures that just gives a lot of character to the background or the chalkboard in this instance. I'm coloring in the apples with some reds using about three shades per apple well for the larger one about two shades for the smaller one until I get the color that I want just blend those out as much as I need to. I'm using about three shades for the leaf. I probably wouldn't need to. It's a pretty small area. Um, I felt like the darker color that I used there was a little too similar to my initial color that I laid down so I ended up going back with a darker one here in a little bit. As the ink dries some of those little dots that I was creating did not show up all that well so I like to go back in once it's dried out a little bit because it is alcohol ink so they are going to dry pretty quickly um, and remake those little dot marks. The more you go over them the lighter they will get. So I'm just simply adding those here and there and I love how as the ink is absorbed into the paper it you can start seeing them show up. So there is part of the design. There I went back in with a little bit darker color. Blended out just a tiny bit. And then I took too much of the detail away so I went back in. I'll do that for the smaller one as well. I wanted a little variation in color for my apples so this one is going to be a tiny bit lighter. I used a lighter base color and then my base color for the other apple is going to kind of be my mid-tone color for this one. And then I'm taking my lightest color and really adding a highlight portion to this particular apple. And you can go over it as many times as you need to. It's enough lighter color that it's 
kind of doing the same thing that the light warm gray marker is doing for the chalkboard background where I added the dots. It kind of wicks away that darker ink. Now I took my lighter color and made the little cheeks on the apple with the face a little bit lighter. Blend that out just a tiny bit so it didn't have such a definition where I really lightened up the cheeks. That way I can go back in here in a little bit with a white pen and add some fun little detail to the cheeks of that apple. As I was coloring, I did go ahead and go back in and add more of those dots to the background of my card as needed, just to make it really fun to do. This is a great way to do a single layer card. You could actually have um, just stamp this and color it and put this panel on a card. I did end up matting mine, but this is a great way to stamp a whole bunch of images. You don't have to do a whole bunch of die cutting all the time. This was really, really quick and easy to do. And I'm really going back in with my marker now. Some of those darker areas to get some of those light dots here and there. I'm going to color in the eraser. I'm use, I started with a pretty yellow color and then I'll darken it up with some, some browns. I'm also going to use two of my brown colors to color in the frame for my chalkboard. I'm just flicking up there on the eraser to give it a little bit of that brush type texture. Moving my paper around as I take that bullet tip there, or not bullet tip, I guess the brush tip rather, and color my frame. I'm going to take even my darkest color and add a tiny bit of detail to the eraser, not a ton. And then I'm pulling in the dark from each side around the frame of my chalkboard so that it's lighter kind of in the center. And I tried to make it not even all the way around. I just wanted it to um, have a nice variation of color. Then I'll smooth that out just a bit, little bit by going back in with my lighter color right there in the middle to just smooth out any of those brush or marker lines. I'm gonna use a little bit of that darkest green for the top of my eraser. And again, go in and use a little bit of the feathering technique to add a tiny bit of color there to my eraser and that is pretty much it for the coloring portion of this card. Here's my white pen that I'll go ahead and add the dot detail to the cheeks of the larger apple. I'm going to use a powder tool to brush over my image and then ink up my greeting from My Silly Valentine with Versamark ink and stamp it right on my chalkboard. I want it to be bright white to look like something you would write with a um, piece of chalk so I'm using some fine detail white embossing powder sprinkle that on heat set that next I am taking one of these stitched rectangle dies and I'm going to die cut this panel from the cardstock that I cut that I cut stamped and colored it on pop that out and then I'm going to go ahead and grab some black cardstock and grab another stitched rectangle one size larger and die cut that. That is going to give me a nice mat to adhere my stamped and colored panel to and it really helps make that whole thing pop. Now I did die cut a, about three hearts here from some dark red cardstock using the hearts lawn fawn lawn cuts dies. And then I'll glue those in place with a little liquid adhesive. I'll go ahead and glue and attach all of the panels to my card. I'm gluing the stamped panel to the black panel just directly on there using a nice strong adhesive. And then I'm going to take that whole thing and adhere it to my white card base using foam adhesive. Once I have that, I use glossy accents on my hearts. I really wish I would have stamped my greeting on the inside of my card first, but I didn't. So if you are going to recreate this, try to do all your stamping first and then go with your glossy accents since it takes a little bit to dry. But there is what the card looks like. I wanted a little bit of that shiny kind of puffy looking epoxy sticker. So I'm taking the glossy accents and just simply adding it to my three hearts and I love how it looks once it's dry. And then the last thing I did was take Happy Valentine's Day from the 
my Silly Valentine stamp set and stamp it with black ink on the inside of my card. So there is a really fun and fairly quick card that you can create for any of those teachers that you might have here for the upcoming Valentine's Day. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.